Welcome this morning to our worship service, and we thank you for coming, whether you are here online or in person or at the lodge later. This is our Sabbath, our day of rest, resting in Jesus, our day of gathering to worship our God. I am Joan Wilms, and I am honored to be your worship leader today. Harvest is well on the way in our community, whether it's crops in the fields or gardens, and we are thankful. It's been um, a lovely fall. We've had great weather, and uh, we thank God for that. Today we have special guests with us from Samaritan's Purse. We have Kendra Shields, who shared in Sunday school this morning. Well, actually, they all shared in Sunday school this morning, and it was a wonderful Sunday school, very informative. Thank you. It was so good to learn all about what, not what Christmas Child is about and the shoeboxes is about. And we are very thankful that we can be a part of that, and we're hoping to supply 50 shoeboxes this year, so um, that's a goal, and we hope that you will help us meet it. So she will also be bringing us the children's story and the message later. She has brought two people with her this morning, uh, Robbie Lynn and Darlene. Would you just like to stand, please? <laughs> Thank you. We really look forward for what they have to share with us this morning. And if you wish to talk to them after the service, they will be in the back and you will have that opportunity. Please join me in worship. Uh, we will start with the call to worship. And I ask you to read the green print and I will read the rest. Psalm 95. Come, let us sing for joy to the Lord. Let us shout aloud to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before him with thanksgiving and extol him with music and song. In his hands are the depths of the earth, and the mountain peaks belong to him. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands formed the dry land. Come, let us bow down in worship, let us kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture, the flock under his care. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, you are our triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. You are worthy of honor, glory, and blessing. You are our loving, forgiving, merciful, powerful, wise God. We gather together to praise and worship you with thankful hearts and humble hearts. Thank you that you are always with us wherever we are. We love you, Lord. Amen. Let's sing and worship and praise our God. Can you stand and join with us, please?
Mark 10, verses 13 to 16. Little children and Jesus. People were bringing little children to Jesus for him to place his hands on them, but the disciples rebuked them. When Jesus saw this, he was indignant. He said to them, let the little children come to me and do not hinder them, for the kingdom of God belongs to such as these. Truly, I tell you, anyone who will not receive the kingdom of God like a little child will never enter it. And he took the children in his arms, placed his hands on them, and blessed them. Kendra will be having a children's story for us today, so I would like to ask all of the children to come forward. And also, um, during the next singing, the kids age two to five can go downstairs with Pam Kin Quinn for their Sunday school. Ages two to five, thank you. Good morning. It's great to see you. So I want to tell you a story about the very first Operation Christmas Child shoebox that I ever saw. I was working in our processing center in Calgary, and I had opportunity to go look through the shoeboxes before they were sent to children just like you all around the world. And I walked in, and I opened the lid of the shoebox, and on the top was a beautiful doll. She had red glittery dress and fancy shoes and a pretty purse, and she was all in this special box. And it said 2009 Holiday Barbie on the box. It was so pretty. I loved that doll. So I took the doll off the top, and I looked inside, and it had duct tape. And then I did some more digging, and it had clothespins. And then I took some more things out, and there was a harmonica, and some marbles, and some bungee cords, and a calculator. And I thought, that doesn't seem like a box that a little girl would want. Duct tape? Clothespins? Bungee cords? So I closed the lid on the shoebox and I read the label and it was green and it said it was for a boy 10 to 14. Well now, all of a sudden, why would a boy want a Barbie doll? So I put up my hand because I like to ask questions and I asked the supervisor if I should take the Barbie out of the box, or what should I do? Because it says boy on the box, but it has a Barbie in it. And she said, Kendra, if it comes in a shoebox and it will clear customs, it has to go in that shoebox. So you put the duct tape and the bungee cords and the clothespins and the harmonica and the marbles, you put that all back in and you put the Barbie back on top and we'll tape it up and we'll send it to some boy around the world. Well, I didn't like that shoebox very much. So I closed the lid, and do you know what I did? I went out of the processing center. I didn't want to do shoeboxes anymore because I was confused by that shoebox. But four months later, I now work not as a volunteer at Samaritan's Purse, but I'm on staff at Samaritan's Purse. And every morning when we start, start our day, we have devotions and we have chapel time and we have prayer time. And I was sitting in the pew uh, and one of our staff members was sharing. He had just been in Central America handing out shoebox gifts. And he was telling us about the different events that they had done. And he said, but there is one event I just have to tell you about. He said, we were in a small community. Uh, it was a farming community. 
And they started handing, getting ready and telling the children about Jesus. And then they told them that they were going to get gifts. And he said, I was sitting with the boys, and everybody was so excited. But one boy in particular was getting really upset when he found out that the children there were going to get gifts, but there were only gifts for the children that were there. And he was so sad because he had come to this event all by himself. He had to leave his best friend, who was his sister, at home because she had been slow in doing her chores and she hadn't been allowed to leave to come to the event. So he was there, but his sister wasn't. And Gil, my colleague who was sharing about this, he said, guys, I just have to tell you what happened. He said, we were sitting there, and all the boys got their shoeboxes. And I said to him, I said, please don't worry. There will be something in your shoebox that you can share with your sister. And I'm sitting in chapel, and I'm like, there's no way. There's no way. And all of a sudden, Gil said, we cut the tape on the shoeboxes, and that boy opened the lid of his shoebox, and do you know what was right on top of his shoebox? It was this red, sparkly dress, Barbie, with her glittery shoes and her fancy purse. How big is our God that he can take one box of 300,000 that I saw and take it all the way to Central America and give that one box to that one boy who just wanted something to share with his sister? That's how big our God is. But you know what? Our God is also cares. He's so big, he cares about the tiniest things, the smallest things that are on our hearts. Not just for that little boy, but for me as well. I learned an important lesson about how great our God is on that day with that shoebox. And the same is true for you. Our big God knows your hearts and he knows what you need, and he longs to give those gifts to you. Amen? Amen. You can go back to your seats now. Please stand and uh, sing a couple of songs with us.
For scripture reading this morning, I will read from 2 Timothy 3, 14 to 17 and Matthew 28, 16 to 20. Continue in what you have learned and have become convinced of because you know those from whom you learned it and from how from infancy you have known the Holy Scriptures, which are able to make you wise of salvation through faith in Jesus Christ. All scripture is God-breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness, so that the servant of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. And Matthew, The eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always, to the very end of the age. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for the Bible and that we have the opportunity to read and study. Open our minds and our hearts as we listen about being sent with a purpose. Bless Kendra as she speaks. Oh, in Jesus' name, amen. Kendra, please. Good morning. It is a privilege to be with you this morning and to share uh, a little bit about Operation Christmas Child, but most importantly, just to remind us um, from God's word, uh, the instructions that he has given us. So I have a question for you. How well do you follow directions? How well do you follow instructions? I have a history in our family that I cannot live down, but when I was 10 years old, I did not follow my mother's instructions very well while baking, and I attempted a blueberry cheesecake with two cups of salt instead of two cups of sugar. And uh, Christmas Eve dessert had a different flavor to it than anticipated. Following instructions. I had the privilege in May of going to the Philippines to work with the team of Operation Christmas Child volunteers in that country and just hear what God is doing in the nation of the Philippines through shoebox gifts. And in preparation for that trip, they had sent us a packing list and they had sent us some instructions that on one day, we would walk up a hill and we may have to cross a river seven times. So pack accordingly. So I took some running shoes for a walk up the hill, running shoes that were old and ugly, and it wouldn't matter if they never came home from the Philippines because they had seen their best days. And off I went to the Philippines. I did not know it was physically possible to be that hot. I have never experienced heat and humidity the way that I experienced it in the Philippines. It was stifling hot at eight o'clock in the morning. And we literally drove off the end of the road and parked in this little cafe community where the gentlemen were hard at work frying bananas to make banana chips to take to the market. They were working over an open fire and I just couldn't even imagine what that was like. And we started our walk up the hill. And the first water buffalo I saw captured my attention. I had never seen a water buffalo before. I had never walked around the edge of a rice paddy before. And I thought, this is going to be an interesting day. 
We got to a little Grace Baptist Church and we met Pastor Mike and he was telling us about this church that we were going to go visit. It's a church that was up on top of, he called it, a hill. It was a mountain. He had been visiting this little tiny community at the top of this hill for about three years. He went every Saturday and he would visit each household in the community. He shared the love of Jesus with them and eventually a little church had started. And by church, I mean one woman and the children that she made come with her. And Pastor Mike just kept going. He kept going and one day he took shoe boxes into that community. And this woman and all of her children, the children that this woman had, received shoebox gifts. And she, um, the little girl, gave her, didn't give her life to Christ when she opened her shoebox gift, but eventually she did when she went through the Greatest Journey Discipleship Lessons. And one day she met her Sunday school teacher and had a conversation with her, and she prayed with her teacher down at the bottom of the mountain where those men were frying the banana chips, right there, she prayed with her teacher, and then she went home with her mom to the top of the hill. And the very next afternoon, she went home to be with Jesus. And her mom's life was so transformed by the hope of knowing that her daughter was with Jesus that she started telling everybody about Jesus. And now, Pastor Mike goes every Saturday to the church with 18 people in it. Mom has told all of her family, and there's this church now meeting regularly at the top of the mountain. That's the church we were going to go visit. And I was so excited. I was hot, but I was excited. I did not know that it was going to be six hours of the most, that is the most stress my body has physically ever been under. There were spiders larger than my palm of my hand that we encountered. There was a bamboo bridge that broke as we crossed it. There were places where we were crawling on our hands and knees to get to the top. And one of our party was so struggling that he decided he was going to stop. He couldn't go any further. And Pastor Mike just kept saying, you have to come. They will be so encouraged. You have to come. So we made our way all the way to the top. And we spent a lovely afternoon with this church family. And as we made our way down, back down the hill, it took us an hour and a half to get down, what took six hours to get up. I was talking with Pastor Mike, and I said, Pastor Mike, how long will you keep going? And he said, oh, he said, I will go, I will stop in every time I go by. Go by? Where are you going to? You live at the end of the earth, and then there just a little bit further, where is there to go? Well, he's learned of another community 13 kilometers further in that he will start visiting, and his hope is to take them shoeboxes next year. I will stop by every time. I will stop in every time I go by. Pastor Mike is following the instruction. Somebody else I know that's following the instruction is a little girl named Danielle. Danielle received a shoebox in Senegal in West Africa, and she lives with 12 others being cared for by a little old lady that is not mom or grandma to any of them, but she's the only mom and grandma that all of them know. And they live in a tiny little um, space between a store and a house where the eaves meet almost, except for right down the middle. But these 12 children and this grandma live in this space. And Danielle's job is to go get water 
and she has to walk to the next community where they have the best water, and it's her job to go on Tuesdays. And while she's there, they happen to be teaching the greatest journey Bible school lesson, Bible study lessons that follow shoebox outreach events with Operation Christmas Child. And so she made sure that she always went on Tuesdays. And she would stay, she would attend the class, and then she would walk home with the water. And I asked her, why do you love going to the Greatest Journey classes so much? She said, well, I love going because it's practice. I said, it's practice. She said, yeah, I want to be a teacher when I grow up. And so I go to the lessons and I pay really close attention and I try to remember everything so that when I get home, I can teach it to my brothers and sisters and mom. And I said, well, how's that going, Danielle? And she said, well, I used to have to come home with the water and I would gather them all up so that I could teach them the lesson that I had learned. And now, I asked her, and she said, now, Miss Kendra, they're waiting for me when I get home. Pastor Mike and Danielle are following the instructions. The instructions that Jesus gave to the disciples when he sent them to go and make disciples, teaching them how well are you, how well am I following those instructions. I'm going to read for us again the passage that we're going to be focusing on this morning out of Matthew 28. Now the eleven. Now the eleven. Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. And when they saw him, they worshipped him, because but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. Who did Jesus give these instructions to? He gave these instructions to imperfect people. Now the 11. This is the group of people that have traveled. They have spent time with Jesus for three years. But they're unsettled. It's not the same group. It's not the same look as it was. One is missing. It looks different. Jesus isn't with them anymore. Jesus did not give these instructions to strong, bold disciples. He gave these instructions to imperfect people. It says that some doubted. After all that time walking with Jesus and seeing all that he did in his earthly ministry, still these men who were with him the most, one was missing and others still doubted. With all the evidence of the truth of what he had said and how it had come true, they still doubted. The instructions to go were given to imperfect people. But the instructions to go were also given with his perfect provision. All authority has been given to me. We are sent with a purpose to go to the nations And God, who is faithful, will provide all that we need to accomplish it. I love the testimony this morning of members of your church who have driven more miles and kilometers than I want to think about in this window, in this season, to go and to serve. A shower trailer, going and serving. All authority has been given to Jesus, and Jesus is is commanding us to go. I love Ephesians 2.10. We are God's workmanship created in Christ Jesus for the works that he prepared in advance for us to do. The work that he has given us to do is his work. 
He is just calling us and sending us to go. And he's given us priorities. I love that. The, inst the instructions he's provided for us are very clear, very specific. Go. Go doesn't necessarily mean like me to the Philippines. Go might be your kitchen table, an opportunity to host a family or to have conversation with someone about the truth of the gospel. Go might be with a shower trailer all the way to Nova Scotia. Go might be to the farm next door to help with whatever their harvest needs are left. But go, be willing to share the truth of who God is with those that we encounter. Make disciples. It's not just about sharing once. It's about the gift of presence, being with them. Making disciples isn't just my mom. Well, evidence, all the evidence you need to know is remember the blueberry cheesecake made with salt, not sugar. But I learned to bake over many times in the kitchen with my mother, observing her and getting to test everything. We make disciples. It's a gift of time that we're prepared to make, an investment that we're prepared to make, and then teach, teaching them all that he has commanded, all that Christ has shown and given to us. We are to teach to others. And then we can rest in this, the most precious promise. He is with us. I am with you to the very end of the age, no matter what it is that God has called us to do, where he has called us to go. He goes with us. He prepares that work in advance. So how well are we following his direction to go and make disciples? I never, ever thought that this was instructions that I would be able to fulfill. I knew that the Lord wasn't gonna send me to Africa. There's snakes there and there's spiders everywhere else. I marvel each and every day at the opportunities that we have even here. I was telling the adult Sunday school class about the gentleman at Staples who I explained when I was purchasing several things that I was sending them in shoebox gifts. And he started hiding all of the clearance items that he thought might work in a shoebox at the back of the store in their clearance rack on a low shelf so nobody else would find them. That is an opportunity to share the love of Christ with someone who may not know what Christ has done for him. Christ is our faithful example, and he knows our imperfections. He knows our fears. He knows, he knows, and yet he has given us all that we need to accomplish the work that he has called us to. Church looks different in this season. At least at my church it does, and other churches I've visited across Canada. But his church his church, his glorious bride, is thriving around the world as others have opportunity to share who Jesus is. There are churches being planted, even as we speak, in some of the most remote places around the world. Again, I want to share a story. I've, I've shared it with the adult Sunday school class already this morning, but in case you missed it, Shoeboxes from Canada, from our Calgary warehouse, went to Sierra Leone last year. And from the shoeboxes sent from Canada into Sierra Leone, probably um, seven containers, so around 65,000 shoebox gifts went from Canada to Sierra Leone. And those boxes started 92 new churches. One of those churches is meeting 
what would be their Sunday afternoon in a mosque. The ministry partner went into this 90% Muslim community and shared shoebox gifts and the story of who Jesus is to all of the children. And the imam, the spiritual leader of the mosque, just marveled that Christians would send gifts like that to the children in his community. He was so moved at that demonstration of love that he opened up the doors of their mosque and told the ministry partner, if you need a place to gather, no matter the weather, you can meet here in our mosque on Sunday afternoons. The light of Christ is going into some of the darkest corners of the world because people like you and like me are packing shoeboxes and sending them. People are willing to go and walk alongside people whose homes have been destroyed by fire. The emergency field hospitals that Samaritan's Purse have deployed. So many unique opportunities, no matter our gifts, our season of life, what the Lord has given us to do is to fulfill the Great Commission. And how we each fulfill that will all look differently. But he is doing it. He is building his church worldwide. I'm sure you're familiar with the name of our organization and you're familiar with the story that Jesus told about the Good Samaritan and the instruction that Jesus gave to the man asking the question, who is my neighbor? Yes, it is the one that showed mercy. But the statement that stands out most of all to me is, you go and do likewise. It's such a privilege to know and to hear and to have spoken to members of your church and, and hear the encouragement, even this morning, the outline of the events that you're involved in in the reach of this ministry, you are faithful servants of Christ that are following his instructions well. Let's continue to be faithful, to go and do likewise, and take the gospel to the ends of the earth. Amen. Thank you so much, Kendra, for sharing your message with us and encouraging us to go out into our community, into our world, and preach the gospel. Could we have the sending song? Could you please join us and stand?
will be in the back. If you have any questions or want to talk to them, they'll be available. So we're going to ask that you allow them to exit first so that um, you can have that opportunity. For the benediction, go, knowing you are beloved of God. Go, praising God for the good news of Jesus Christ. Go, living the message of God's grace, peace, and love. Amen. <laughs>